Okay, so this presentation, um, we're going to be using one PowerPoint, and the first half is going to be about heat transfer. So that's what we're going to talk about first. Okay, going to slide two. Um, the first piece of important information that we need to make sure that you know is what ASHRAE stands for. This is an international organization that is responsible for the standards on heating, refrigeration, and air conditioning issues. The acronym ASHRAE stands for the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers. You can click on this link below on the slide if, if you want to learn more about the organization. When you think about structures, there are many different professions and types of engineers that work together. The architects uh, design the appearance and the functionality of the building, how it looks and how it feels when people enter it. They consider how people use and move through the building and make sure the space satisfies those needs. The structural engineer makes sure that the building is able to stand and support all the loads needed. The electrical engineers make sure the building has all the power that the building needs to function. And finally, the mechanical engineers make sure that the heating, air conditioning, and plumbing systems are laid out and function properly. Now, these types of engineers, the electrical and the mechanical engineers, when it comes to systems and buildings, are the most employed in the Baltimore and Washington areas. These types of engineers are always in high demand. Mechanical systems engineers are primarily concerned with two things when it comes to systems. This is important to know. They are concerned uh, about temperature change, which is sensible heat, and they are concerned about air quality, which is related to latent heat. Okay, this slide shows you the ideal conditions for the I I ideal conditions that mechanical engineers shoot for when they are designing the air conditioning and heating systems for a building. The ideal conditions are 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity. Okay, people seem to be the most comfortable and productive at these conditions. However, these conditions are not always met. And this is important to know for your assignment. Okay, in the winter when it's extremely cold, they try to aim for 68 degrees and have a lower humidity. The air is a bit more dry. In the summer, when it's extremely hot, they try to aim for 75, so excuse me, 78 degrees and have a higher humidity. Adjusting the ideal conditions in these extreme temperatures allows the system to be a bit more efficient. This slide shows the performance reduction when ideal conditions are not met. As you can see, the temperature and humidity are an important part of making sure that the space is comfortable so that people can be productive. So as we get into talking about mechanical systems, we need to talk about heat transfer and refrigeration. The term refrigeration you, typically makes people think about something cold. When in fact, the process refers to removing heat from one substance to another. Think about your refrigerators. You put some food or drink in the interior chamber, close the door, and it removes the heat from that substance so it stays fresh. It expels the heat outside of the refrigerator so the interior temperature does not allow the food to spoil. Now I've already mentioned the two types of form, excuse me, I've already mentioned the two forms of heat briefly. Let's talk about them in more detail. One type is sensible heat. This can be simply thought of as temperature change. How much energy is required to take an object from one temperature to another? The other type of heat is latent heat. This is the heat that is involved when, phase, when a phase change happens. For example, this is what happens when you freeze water to make ice cubes, when you put ice cubes into a drink and they melt, or when you boil water and it begins to evaporate. When we're talking about heat transfer, it's important to mention the conservation of thermal energy. Heat typically flows from a higher energy substance to a lower energy substance. Okay? This means that hot items typically cool down until the temperature is the same throughout. Now, yes, things can heat up, but only if you apply energy into the system. Also, it should be noted that heat energy cannot be destroyed. 
It can only be transferred, transferred from one substance to another. This is a great example of that happening. Think about the glass of lemonade here. You put ice cubes into the glass of lemonade and it transfers the energy to the liquid. The temperature rises to equalize and the, as a result, the ice melts. Now there's three modes of heat transfer. They're defined in this slide. The first is conduction. This is when heat flows through a material. It requires contact. Basically, the molecules of a system bounce into each other to transfer the heat throughout. The second is called convection. This occurs when molecules of a substance are in motion and as a result, changing the temperature. The last is radiation. This is where heat is emitted across the space. This heat can occur in a vacuum when no air is present. This slide shows some great examples of the modes of heat transfer. The conduction can be shown by the person picking up the hot handle on the pot. The heat travels through the handle into the skin of the person, giving a warm or burning sensation. The convection is seen by the water moving inside the pot when it begins to boil. The hotter the water is, the more, more movement you will see. The radiation is shown by the heat given off by the fire. You know that when you get near fire and you're trying to get warm, you put your hands out and the heat radiates into your hands, warming you up. Okay, this slide reviews the units for the rate of heat flow. In the English system, the unit is the BTUs per hour. This stands for British Thermal Units Per Hour. Most mechanical and, and excuse me, most mechanical system engineers use this a lot because it's how systems and equipment are rated and sold. The other, the SI unit, is kilowatts. This is also a unit of the metric system. This system is nice because you can directly take the electrical energy that is needed to run a system and convert it to thermal energy. These are the most common units of, uh, excuse me, these are the most common units for rate of heat flow. There is one other unit used, and that's called a ton of refrigeration. Yes, this sounds very silly, but it actually exists. It's used for large scale systems that could be used in schools, hospitals, and other large structures. It actually is how much energy it would take to 2, 000, melt 2,000 pounds of ice, which is a ton, over a 24 hour period. This is used for large scale systems only. We will not be using this in our class. For the first mode of heat transfer, conduction, here's the equation needed to do calculations. You will notice that there are two equations here. The first one, Q equals UA delta T, is primarily used for buildings. The other we will use for smaller conduction calculations. The second is Q equals KA delta T over small t. Q is noted as the heat. U or K is the thermal conductivity. A is the cross-sectional area that the heat must travel through. For example, what is the area of a wall that heat must go through to heat or cool your house? And delta T is the temperature difference. It's basically what you're trying to heat up or cool it down to. Little t is the thickness of the material that the heat travels through. The equation for the second mode of heat transfer convection is shown here. Again, Q is heat. Little h is the heat transfer coefficient. A is the area that the heat comes into contact with, so it's the surface area. Ps is the surface temperature of the object, and T infinity is the temperature of the fluid stream that is doing the heating or the cooling. The easiest way to understand these two temperatures is thinking about a bowl of soup. The temperature of the soup is usually pretty hot. That is the Ts. When the soup is hot, what do you usually do? you usually blow on it to cool it down. The temperature of your breath when you blow on the soup is T infinity. I always remember the soup example and that helps me keep straight the two temperatures. The equation for the last mode of heat transfer radiation is shown here. This looks a little bit more complicated, but it's really not that bad. Instead of Q, the heat is noted as emissive power because the heat can occur in a vacuum. Epsilon, or the funny looking E, is the emissivity coefficient. 
it's going to be a number between 0 and 1. There is no unit for this value. Sigma is the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. This is a certain number and will never change. It will always be the numbers that are listed. Make sure that you're using the proper units, either English or metric. In most cases, you're going to use metric. And then finally, there's the T, T values, the temperature values. TS is the surface temperature and TSUR is the surrounding temperature. The key thing to note here that affects calculations is that this temperature must be noted in absolute units. So we cannot use Celsius or Fahrenheit here. We must use Kelvin or ranking here. Remember to convert Celsius to Kelvin. All you need to do is add 273. You must remember to change it to absolute temperature because you will be raising each temperature to the fourth power. Please remember to do that or your answers will not be correct. At this point, you should be able to look back, look at the practice problems and do those on your own. The answer keys are also avail available to you so you can check your answers and see how the problems are worked out. Good luck.